Hi everyone, welcome to ActiveDNet at the CVPR 2021 MMX Challenge. I'm Kong, one of the co-organizers in this task. MMX Challenge is a challenge that encourages the participants to provide approaches to address vision-related challenges for human action understanding across modern manners. So here are some typical vision-related challenges such as occlusion, better camera angles, and appearance variance, which all has been included in our challenge data set. So one considerable way to solve this kind of challenges is that we can use the other modalities such as body one sensor to sense the human motion to avoid vision failures. However, it is very hard to let the users to use wearable device even in the real world inference phase. So that's in our training data set, we provide sensor and videos in our training phase that we hope the user to use the sensor data to be transferred with the knowledge to the vision related models in a cross model manners. And in the test phase, we, are, we only provide the vision data. Our channel data set is based on the MMX data set. So this is a large scale multimodal data set for action understanding. So we provide five modalities, 1,600 untrimmed videos, 32,000 of clips, and 35 classes, four scenes, four views, and 20 subjects in our data set. Here are some sample frames in our data set. So the X axis is the different scenes and the Y axis different camera views. And in our data set, we provide daily and app norm and the desk work related actions. About the modalities, in our data set, we provide five kinds of different modalities. For example, acceleration, gyroscope, orientations, which have been captured from the sensor, uh, variable sensors such as a smartwatch attached on the human's hands and the smartphone put in the human's pants pocket. So we also provide some fan grade level classes in our data set. For example, about the action carries. So this action has been divided into carry heavy things and carry less things. You can find that it is very hard to tell the difference between these two kinds of classes in the region related data. However, the it is totally different from each other in the sensor data. So we provide 32,000 of, of trimmed videos as clips in our data set. So these videos then range from roughly three to eight seconds. For example, we have a set down, run, transfer object, carry, drink, wave hand. So we also provide untrimmed videos. So these videos then range from roughly five to 10 minutes with multiple actions. That's in the untrimmed videos, person take each action one by one and uh, between the two different actions, there will be, uh, there will be uh, random work has been performed. And the interval between each two actions are uh, roughly from five to 30 seconds. So we have a two sub tasks in our challenges. The task one is about action recognition, which is a simple classification task. We provide two kinds of data speeds in our in this task. The first one is about the cross view trimmed video speeds. So this speeds provides multiple views for training and unseen views for testing. We also have a cross cross scene trimmed video speeds. So this speed provides scenes without occlusion for training and scenes include occlusion for testing. So we also, in, in this task, we provide a sensor and a video data for training phase, but only video data for test phase. So, and the average of MAP across about two kinds of data set is used as, as our evaluation metrics. And our subtask two is about action temporal localizations. In this task, we provide entry the cross section speed for using. So this task asks the user to output the recognized action class and the start and end time for the given entry the videos. The same as task one, they also provide a sense and the video for training phase and but only video data for test phase. Uh, we use interpolated average precision, which is the same index used in the activity net temporal localization task as our final evaluation matrix. Okay, uh, let's move to the next session about the challenge result. MML challenge result. So this shows overall statistics. We have 
26 teams participated with 139 submissions overall. Uh, for task one, 19 teams with 97 submissions. For task two, 11 teams with 42 submissions. Now let's take a look at each of these tasks. Task one is action recognition. This table shows top one accuracy with average across all submissions. Uh, and we showed a uh, cross view average precision and cross scene average precision for each table. And these classes corresponds to significantly higher average uh, precision, means these classes are easy tasks, easy classes. So let's take a look at the example. For instance, um, exit, pull, push, drink, stand up, jump. These classes are relatively easier in action recognition. Then let's take a look at hard classes. So similar tables are shown with a relatively lower average precision. Uh, let's take a look at the example. Carry light baggage, carry heavy baggage, carry loitering, check time, point. They are relatively hard classes, especially they have um, interaction with objects and so on and so forth. This is final result. Uh, top three teams are shown. Uh, the first is Deep Blue Technology with MAP 0.95. Second, OPPO Research Institute with MAP 0.92. University Copeland's is the third with MAP 0.94. Okay, then let's move on to the uh, task two. Task two is action temporal localization. So this shows uh, overall uh, average across all submissions with MAP versus time IOU. So as you can see, if we set the threshold for time IOU higher, then MAP will significantly be lower. So this uh, explains uh, that task two is significantly harder than task one. Okay, so this table shows the result of top two teams, Deep Blue Technology and OPPO Research Institute with uh, AP relatively higher, meaning, so they correspond to relatively easy classes. Uh, they include entering, using phone desks, uh, using PC and pushing. So next is similar table with relatively lower average precision, meaning, so they correspond to hard classes. Uh, there is some interesting finding. For instance, if you take a look at transferring object, two teams have significantly different performance. Uh, in this case, Deep Blue Technology AP is significantly higher than OPPO. While at the same time, if we take a look at the kicking class, uh, AP of OPPO is significantly higher than Deep Blue. So there can be some interesting differences. So let's take a look at the example. So they corresponds to hard classes in action temporal localization, um, including transfer object, kick, throw, Fall. And this shows the overall performance. Deep Blue Technology, MEP is 0 0.44. OPPO Research Institute, MEP is 0 0.40. So this summarizes 
Um, so overall, uh, teams acquired a significantly high accuracy at trimmed action recognition task. Fine grained class such as carry related classes um, can be still hard for even for heavy and cumbersome uh, network architecture as far as they use LGP information only. And temporal localization is still a tough task in MM Act. Uh, therefore, we, we are waiting for further solutions. Overall, we are looking forward to more cross or multimodal way to resolve uh, this kind of uh, vision related challenge. Thank you very much. Okay, we are going to announce the winners. The winners of MM Act Challenge 2021 are the run up is Visual Analysis of Humans from Apple Research Institute, led by Chen Jam. In the first place, the winner is Team. Deep Blue AI from Deep Blue Technology, led by Jigwei Jam. Many congratulations to both teams. For the remaining time, we have two talks by Deep Blue and the Apple Research Institute. Hello everyone, we are team of Deep Blue AI. Here is our report for the MMCT challenger. We participated in the two tasks and reinforced in both. For task one, the data set of the task includes the crossword videos and the cross sensor videos. Both of the two types of videos have 35 engine class from 20 subjects. After analyzing the data set, we found that the duration range of video is vast, but the sample number of different classes are balanced. To complete the task, we chose two methods. Firstly, is TSM. In this method, we use rest side filter as backbone and sample 32 samples from each video at an EQ interval. For data augmentation, we first reset the video by south side the random scales curve and the horizontal frame rate. For IRCS, we use run side 152 as a backbone and sample 32 from the form of each video by sliding window with the form of interval equal to 4. And use the same data augmentation method in TSM. When training, we both TSM and IRCS are pre trained on. Connected 400, we use 8 GPUs and 4 video PR GPU for TSM, 1 video for IRCS. On the training 42 reports, we set the model with the latest report for testing. When testing with TSM, we crop the four corner and the center part of the images and flip them, then average the results. When testing with IRCS, we sample 10 curves from each video and for each curve, crop three curves, then average the results. And we also perform some observation study on different backgrounds, sample different number from from each video, add a non-local model to the network or not, mix out data documentation, and so on. At the point in the table, we can see that only increase the sample from a number helpful to improve the performance of models. Finally, by original the result of TSM with soccer of 0.95 and the LSS with soccer 
of uh, 0 0.9465. We got our best uh, result. For tag 2, the distance uh, of the task have uh, 35 action cards from uh, 27 cases. With four camera wheels and uh, four sensors using the task, we sample 2,304 from the former each video at EQ interval. And the result is sampled from 2,112. Then I track the raw data from the sampled from the easy task. We use the AFSD as a method, which is an entry framework for action detection task and an end to end method used from the input rather than features. Your solution, we train the two models that use RGB data and flood data. To train the model, we use one GPU which by size is equal to one and use the pre trained model weight on activity net design. After training, 24 epochs we set the model weight of latest epoch for test. When testing, we use the center curve with size 96.96, get part of the images as models input. Finally, by original results, all models trained by RGB data and flow data, we got our best result. In the end, for test one, simple more forms and simple from the from the whole video instead of a sample by sliding window can get better performance. And uh, they also have some work need to do. Firstly, because of some accident costs having on the side of the video, send the crop may drop out the available information when testing and generate noise samples in the training process. Secondly, for action detection with long time video, the method which do not need to input the whole video need to be as per. That's all, thank you. Hello everyone, we are the viral analysis of Hems team, which belongs to the OCO Research Institute. Our members include Chen Chen, Xin Xiangtao, Yan Longbo, and me, I'm Chen Zhang. For the two tasks in the challenge, we only use RGB video in MMCT multi-modality dataset as the input of CNN. And we uh, neither use the uh, external data in any task now uh, match the date, date from different tasks. For the trimmed action recognition task, we merge carrying, carrying light, and uh, carrying highway into one category, which we call carrying. So the 35 classification categories can be changed to 33. We train a classify of 33 uh, uh, categories and a classify only used to distinguish the three categories of carrying, carrying light, and the carrying highway, uh, and uh, uh, cas ca cascaded the uh, two classifies. If the classification result of the first stage is carrying, then the corresponding trim the video will be put into the second stage classify for further classification. Since most of the uh, trimmed video data in the MMCT dataset is uh, uh, four second uh, snippets at uh, 24 IPS, uh, we, use, we use 32 films sampled at uh, three film internals on the uh, video stream as input to trim a CNN on the trimmed uh, cross scene video dataset and the trimmed cross view uh, video dataset respectively. We train multiple end-to-end -end action recognition networks for uh, cross scene and cross view respectively, including CSN, SlowFast, uh, and the TPN, which are the typical of applying 3D CNN to action recognition and the state of the art on uh, kinetics. We get a classification prob probability for each trimmed video by for by forward propagation on all the CNN uh, models and get the final classification result by an ensemble strategy. And our ensemble strategy is to sum the models output a uh, classification prob 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 probability uh, after 
uh, be uh, multiplying by the width. So the width are uh, proportional to the AP of the single model. The table above, above is uh, our training config. We also tried other config and found that for the two tasks of uh, cross scene and cross wheel, uh, the model ob obtained by uh, training scene with the config in the table had the best metric values on the uh, validation set. And the table below is part of our experiment uh, our course. We found that for, uh, for single model, so uh, the performance of CSN is better than slow fast and uh, TPN. Therefore, uh, in order to cover the case of input values, uh, which are longer than four seconds, uh, we trained two uh, additional CSN models after uh, modifying the input sampling strategy. From the uh, e experiment uh, results, it can be seen that for uh, that the uh, offline ensemble strategy is effective. From the uh, for the untrained action uh, temporal lo localization task, uh, we also use a two stage class bias. Uh, we get the uh, training training video clips from the untrained video uh, according to the uh, time step in the uh, annotation and train the CSN on the uh, video clips with uh, 32 uh, films uh, sampled at uh, uh, three film internals as input. After training, we use a sliding window with a, a, a stride, stride side of three films, uh, films on the entry in the video. And uh, each window outputs the uh, rough classification result uh, within this time uh, period. We mainly use uh, four types of post-processing to refine the classification and uh, time step results output by the sliding window. Well, first of all, we set a minimum and a maximum duration threshold for each category. Uh, secondly, we set a, a confidence uh, threshold for each category. Uh, thirdly, for uh, adjusted uh, results of the same category, if the uh, time time will, uh, eternal is less than the threshold, the two results are normal. Uh, finally, uh, shrink or extend the time step class by class. Uh, we obtained the uh, minimum duration threshold by uh, observing the annotation and uh, uh, obtained the final um, maximum duration uh, threshold by comparing the metric value on the validation set when set different uh, uh, maximum duration thresholds. Uh, our confidence, our confidence uh, score uh, threshold is also obtained by comparing the uh, metric value on the validation set. Uh, through the experiment uh, course in the table, uh, our our, our post-processing methods can uh, effectively improve AP. In, in addition, uh, we finally uh, adjust the, uh, the threshold of shrink, uh, shrink or extend the timestamp carefully, and we finally uh, achieve the AP of 14.69 14, 14 on the test set. Thanks.